Hello everybody on YouTube. I'm going to talk about the perfect storm from a poet's perspective. And there was a, yeah, I listen to uh, Coast to Coast, Coast to Coast AM uh, every once in a while when I'm not working the next day. I used to be a Coast Insider, can't afford it anymore. But uh, anyways, it was a yeah, recent uh, recent episode that came on a little while ago. Um, today's June 16th, 2017. And uh, I don't remember the exact day that he was talking about, but it was definitely in June. And one of the things that pop came up was the perfect storm. He wrote an article and it's still on his uh, website about the uh, the perfect storm and that six trends that um, if we continue it'll mean collapse for humanity and the world and Huffington Post and all these uh, other people back in 2010 uh, uh, wrote about it and uh, well the six trends that's the, and I'm going to talk about each of these individually in a moment but the six trends climate change peak oil collapse of the world's oceans deforestation the global food crises soils weather and water and the last one is overpopulation now <laughs> climate change the hot word that's uh, yeah it has been going on since 2010 it seems longer than that climate change was something uh, the progressive media first came up with it was an idea where they uh, where the whole we were trying to get all the other countries in the world part of this so they can put a global tax on carbon funny thing is we breathe out carbon dioxide you know, so in a sense of putting a tax on our breath. <laughs> Anyways, I've talked about that in another video and you can always go to that to, uh, to watch that. Now, is the climate warming or is it cooling? Some people say it's cooling. The progressives say it's warming. I don't really care about that because the climate has been warming and cooling longer than humanity has been here and it'll probably be go on longer even when humanity's going out to the stars at least until the sun explodes or expands anyways then it'll always be global uh global warming so i don't care about you know is it cooling or is it getting too hot no but the thing that i am passionate about and I would think that these progressives should be passionate about too if they mean what they say and say what they mean and that's pollution you know that is something that we need to we need to uh, deal with you know clean the ears clean the air <laughs> it's only plural it's only uh, there's only one air just like math there's only one math there's no maths anyways uh, have clean air and I do believe that the air is cleaner than it was back in the early uh, 20th century when we started 
with factories and stuff like that, you know. I also do believe that we need to recycle more. I see a little bit of that, but not as much as what could actually be done. So yeah, all those things are important, but will they cause global collapse? Maybe in a long, long time. Sirens, I don't know if you hear the sirens. <laughs> By a busy street. Wow, active tonight. Um, so, yeah, you know, we, we need to, you know, need more. We have to do stuff to clean the environment, to, like, uh, learn to recycle. Cleaner, cleaner energy. Yes, go into solar, go into air, but have it be sustainable. You know, maybe we need to do tiny houses. Of course, some of those things are really small. And you'd almost have to have like maybe three or four little tiny houses together for a family of, uh, you know, five or six. <laughs> I think even though I think a family of four could probably fit into one tiny house. Uh, but doesn't leave that much room for anything else you know for someone to uh, be alone with their thoughts so anyways yeah so climate change you know yeah who cares about climate change but cleaning the environment recycling reusing being smart with our resources yes we need to do that peak oil well Peak oil, <laughs> that's something that we're talking about back in, I don't know, 80s, 90s. It, was, it seemed like a long time, that, you know, and I, I thought that the theory was by the uh, new millennia, the planet would run out of oil. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> you know, but, you know. I do think that we do need to explore other things. I mean, Nikola Tesla had a good idea about getting electricity from the uh, atmosphere. Free electricity. But uh, of course, it was one problem with that. It was free. They couldn't charge it. You know? And Tesla was the real genius behind alternative current in our modern society. But I think he was uh, thinking of something bigger. Third one, collapse of the world's oceans. Yes, we definitely have to, we have to do something with that, you know. You know, like recycling is like one thing instead of like dumping our shit in the ocean you know it's I mean yeah the oceans are big and stuff like that but you know if we're gonna uh, dump our shit anywhere why not dump it into a volcano you know incinerate the stuff you know I mean and we can still incinerate some garbage and we do have good filters we do have good filters to clean the air that comes out. Or hey, even better yet, like uh, learn to reuse some of these materials. You know, reuse some of these plastics, other sources, reuse paper, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, we do definitely have to worry about the world's oceans, but it has to come down to like, you know, recycling and just, again, managing our resources. You know, we'll never become a type one civilization if we don't learn how to manage our planetary resources and not 
taxing people to death. You know, deforestation. Yeah, there's been some uh, cutting of trees down, but there's also been uh, lots of uh, planting of trees. I mean, true, we lost some of the, um, oh, I can't think of the name of that big, the, uh, is it the Amazon? Where, uh, you know, there's like a life, a plant life and animal life that we haven't discovered yet. You know, that the, uh, yeah, that's going down. But in other areas, you know, like the area where I live in New Hampshire, way back when, the White Mountain National Forest was like all clear cut. You go there now, today, it doesn't look like things were clear cut. You know, again, comes down to managing our resources. Global food crises. This is definitely a big problem, but the solution is also simple. Greenhouses. We have, we have a lot of tech about greenhouses. Through our greenhouse technology, we could plant food in every single climate that is on this planet from the arctic to the desert and everywhere in between cities why haven't we why haven't we built you know like multiple story greenhouses to have uh, a whole bunch of food in one area you know it could be like a, a block or two in a city you know it's some, some old buildings you know that's uh knock down the uh knock down those old buildings put up a, a new uh greenhouse you know why haven't we done that well have you know we need to do that we do need to do that hey businesses wake up wake up there is money in that there is jobs in that. Why haven't we done that? Just one of those questions. Um, and the other thing is overpopulation. And they thought that the world was overpopulated, I don't know, I think it was back in the 19th or early 20th century. Look at it now. You know, we still haven't run out of space. You know, we don't, you know, there are a lot of people being born, but there's also a lot of people that are dying. You know, and there is also enough people to take care of the babies being born. So I don't think we have to worry about overpopulation. <clears throat> but again, you know, it's like managing our resources, having different types of buildings, having, you know, a more uh, planetary type of uh, energy. And then maybe we can actually use our tech, our minds, our creativity, and start exploring out into space. Even though, according to some conspiracy theorists, there are people living on Mars. I have no idea. You know, there's this guy that uh, I can't think of his name wants to send people, a bunch of people, one way trip to Mars, you know, and have a, uh, you know, because there's a uh, climate up there. Well, 
that could be a lie. You know, that entrepreneur or whatever, that guy, that progressive, I think he's uh, a big one into uh, wanting to depopulate the earth. So what good way of doing it? Just like getting people to pay you money to kill them. You know, it's just like, yeah, you know, I don't know. You know, we need to go out in space, but, you know, we need to be more mindful of that. You know, and there's things we can do here on the earth to become that type one civilization, to manage our resources and bring in a new golden age. We need to focus, put our focus on local communities, change within the local communities. I keep saying that, and I'm going to keep saying that because it's important. The power is within the local communities. If you want to make a change, make it in your local city, your local state, because they're closer to the people. And if it's a good idea, it's going to spread. It will spread. The free market will spread it. You know, and we'll learn to manage our resources and be, and be a uh, type 1 civilization. A planetary, a true planetary civilization. Billionaires, you need to invest in your local communities. You got, you know, the business people doing business in local communities. You need to invest in the people in those communities because businesses, if you're doing business in a particular town or city, okay, and you have employees there, those employees are your customers. Why would you not take care of them? You take care of them, they take care of you and your business will grow. In the early 20th century, the big the big people knew this. Walmart knew this. JC Penney knew this. Why don't people know that now? Simple. Too much is given, much is required. Think about that. Millionaires and billionaires. Thank you for watching and listening. And this has been The Perfect Storm from a Poet's Perspective. Thank you for listening. Stay creative in the magic of life. And of course, may the force be with you all. Thank you.